and welcome to another Garden City Arts online program. Today, we are painting some drama and gonna make this llama. So, to get started, we're gonna set our paint to the side for now and we're gonna pick up our trunk. So, we need to draw out this drama llama before we start painting him. Now, before we get started, let's be clear. Llamas are kind of weird looking. I think that's why we all love them. So to draw them, it might look a little odd at first, but hang in there. I promise it'll make sense in the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You have your chalk and a yellow canvas, and we're gonna draw this llama. Very first thing we're gonna do is do a nice big circle. This is gonna be kind of where his eyes and his mouth are going to be eventually. And so it needs to be pretty big. Can't be a teeny tiny circle. So if you have trouble like me drawing circles, you can always put uh, two little dots on the sides and then make a hill and then a bowl. That will help you. Now, this circle actually needs to be a little bit lower. I drew it too, too high. So remember, even the teacher can make mistakes. So I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna show you why we're using chalk since I decided to make a mistake. I'm gonna take my clean damp brush. I just wet it just a little bit, but I don't want it dripping wet. And look at that, I can erase the chalk as if it was never there. So this is why chalk is a really good tool to have because when you make a mistake, you can erase it. It's not permanent. Okay, so we have the Drama Llama's nose, and now we're gonna put a little cap on top of this. So a nice little hill right on top. Like I said, it's gonna look weird at first, don't worry. Then we're gonna come down below the circle. And do you remember those points we used? We're gonna draw a straight line from those points going off our canvas. Now we have a neck and we have a mouth and a head. Now we need some ears. Llamas have really cute ears. So first, I'm gonna put a point on either side for the tops or the ends or the points of his ear. Once we have that, we can do what kind of looks like a teardrop. So it's really nice and pointed at the top and then it comes out and gets round at the bottom. So do two little teardrops for his or her ears. Now we have our llama drawn. I know it looks weird, but I promise it is gonna be the most fantastic llama ever in a few simple steps. So, very first thing we have to do is paint this guy white. We're painting the whole llama white, leaving the outside alone for now. So, I would suggest using a big brush, but if you're a new painter, you can use some smaller brushes, okay? So the big brush is a wash brush, this middle guy is a shader brush. He looks just like the wash brush, but he's smaller. And a round brush are the three brushes that you need. Make sure you have a can for water. And if you bought the art kits from Garden City Arts, then you have all of your colors already mixed up and ready to go. All you need to do is lay them out on your foam plate. And this foam plate is our palette because it holds our paint, okay? So palettes are for holding paint and for mixing paint. So. Now that we know what we're doing and we have everything ready to go, I'm gonna grab some paint and I'm gonna mix some water into it. Notice how I'm mixing the water kind of on the side, not in the middle of the paint pile, but kind of on the side. I'm mixing some water in so that the paint will be easier to use. And I'm gonna start using the top edge of my brush, not the side. The top edge will help you outline. Do you see how it makes a really nice line? So I'm gonna outline everything on my llama. Outlines are the outer edges of an object, okay? So we all have outlines, don't we? We're all solid, so we all have a place where we end, basically. That's basically what an outline is. So I'm gonna go and outline everything. And once I have it outlined, I'm gonna fill it in. So. To fill in, we use the edge of our, the side of our brush a lot more. So I'm gonna start right on that line that I just did, the outline. 
and I'm using the side of my brush to bring the paint in towards the middle. Okay, I can flip it around. This llama's gonna be on his side for a little bit. That's okay. And I can just paint and bring the white in towards the center of my llama. This first layer does not have to be solid. It's okay if you see a little teeny tiny bit of the yellow showing through. Don't try to add more paint. Just know that you can add a second layer and that we will be adding a second layer very soon. Now keep in mind that these videos are pretty fun because if you are speedy, speeder than I am, then you can push the fast forward button to keep going. And you know, if you're a little bit slower than I am, which is okay, you can pause the video and catch up and then resume it when you're ready, okay? All right, so I have a nice white llama. It's just basically the shape of the llama, but we're getting somewhere. Very first thing I need to do is swirl, tap, and dry my brush. So I'm gonna swirl, tap, and dry my brush so that there is no paint left in my brush. Sometimes you have to scroll multiple times to get all that paint out. Okay, now we're gonna pick up the shader brush and we're gonna do a second layer on this llama, but we're gonna start introducing another color. We're gonna introduce this light gray. So we're only using white and light gray, that's it. We want to start painting at the bottom and work our way up so that it looks like the fur on the llama. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Very first thing you wanna do is prime your brush. You always prep your brush by dipping it in paint water and then patting it dry. A lot of times you also need to mix water into your paint, okay? Not always, but sometimes. And so I'm gonna grab some light gray and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my llama. And do you see how I'm making these little brush strokes going up and down? It's just a whole row straight across of these gray brush strokes, gray lines. I can come back in and add another layer of white on top of that, and then it starts to look kind of like fur. And the more you do this, the furrier your llama looks. So remember, you can go a little bit outside your llama to make him look a little furry. Maybe he's had a bad hair day, some hair sticking up a little bit. This is your painting, so you can do that if you want. I'm going to do this whole llama like this. Now, this takes a bit of time. And, you know, if you're going a little slower than I am, that's okay. I am going to speed up the video and press kind of fast forward so that you don't have to watch every single little brush stroke that I do. So, if you want to, or if you need to, you can pause the video while you are painting. I'm just gonna pass, push fast forward on my editing button and kind of jump ahead so that you don't have to watch all this. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward now. Okay, I'm gonna stop. So I've gotten all the way to the top of my llama's head. My llama is nice and furry now. It's okay if it's kind of patchy, if there's some areas of gray, some areas of white, you'll notice that I used a lot of gray on this side and not so much on that side. That makes him look a little shaded. Now, his ears. Don't worry so much about the middle, but you will want to make the out edge, outer edges of his ear a little bit more solid and not so see-through. So you don't want any yellow popping through on the edges of his ears. The inside, eh. I'll show you why that's an eh thing in a little bit. We're gonna use another color to go over that center part. Okay, our llama is looking fabulous. Now, while we're waiting for our llama to dry, we're going to move on to the background. You get to do anything you want. I did a series of swirls and dots. So I did a whole bunch of different 
things to my background. I kind of made it random. You don't have to do swirls. Could you do um, polka dots? Of course. Hearts? Sure. Stars? Of course. That sounds fun. You could do flowers. Anything you want. My only suggestion is that you use white, light gray, and the dark gray. That's it. I would suggest staying with those colors so that his flower crown or her flower crown that we're going to put on will really stand out and the background won't take away from our llama. So I'm going to use my round brush and I'm going to start drawing some lines. Now this is a good opportunity to talk to you about how to use your brush in an effective way. If you press hard, it's going to make a really big line. If you press light as a feather, you're going to make a much lighter line, okay? So when you're making swirls, it's better to press light as a feather. So you don't put all of the weight or um, of your hand on the top of the brush. You press light. You can always rest your hand on something if you're struggling with that. Practice on your foam palette if you want to before you get started. All right, I'm going to make some circles. I'm going to make some dots. I'm going to use white paint and make some swirls. more gray dots, I think I am good to go with the background. You don't have to do a lot. You can just do enough to fill the background. You don't want to do so much that it takes away from our llama because after all, it's all about that llama. The drama llama. Alrighty, look at this llama. He looks fabulous. Now, we have to make sure that our llama is dry before we start painting on top of him. If your llama is like mine and it's not quite dry, you could push the pause button, go stretch, run around, pet your puppy, whatever you want to do, and then come back to it in a little bit, okay? Um, you could also do what I'm doing, which is doing some cleanup. So I had some chalk on there that I decided not to use. So I'm using a clean, damp brush and I'm taking that chalk off so it's not distracting, okay? Um, you could go grab some juice or something, stretch. We'll start back up as soon as our llama is dry in just one moment. Okay, so my llama's dry. I hope yours is too. This next part we are going to do is a little bit tough because we can't really use chalk, white chalk on our white llama to draw it. You can try. If you notice it's not really um, doing anything, you can't really see, then I would just suggest doing what I'm about to do. I'm taking my round brush. So the best brush you have for making curvy lines which is the round brush, and I'm gonna mix some water into my black paint, and then I'm going to draw some eyes. Do you see how this curvy line kind of comes in and meets his other curvy lines going down his head? Do you remember that cap that we put on top of the circle? That's the area where we're gonna put our eyes. So I'm gonna start right there, and I'm gonna make a nice curvy um, hill. Then I'm gonna make a bowl. I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Curvy hill, 
and a bowl. And it's okay if this black comes out a little bit past your llama's head. Llamas are kind of bug-eyed, which means their eyes are super big and uh, they come out a little bit past their head. So I'm going to paint this circle in black. It's gonna look a little weird. Remember, trust that your lava will look awesome at the end. It's gonna look a little weird at first, but don't worry. Okay, I have eyes, my llama can see. Now I need to do a nose. And the nose kind of looks like an avocado or an egg, okay? It's skinnier at the top than it is at the bottom. So I'm gonna use my dark gray for my nose. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is do a little teeny tiny curved line. And that's gonna be the bump or the top of his uh, um, avocado nose. And then I'm gonna do a bigger curved line down below. Do you see how it looks kind of like a bowl? So there's a hill and a bowl. Now I'm going to connect the two by doing some diagonal lines. And I now have a nose. I'm gonna fill it in solid with dark gray paint. eyes and yeah they're not finished but that's okay we've got them started now the next step is to add some pink that's why we have this light pink next on our palette we are gonna put light pink in the inside of his ears and we're gonna make a little heart nose for him as well or her so I'm gonna start with his ears and let his um, nose area dry a little bit just like before if you need to mix some water into your pink paint remember do that on the side of your big pile of paint and the first thing I'm going to do is draw a little line and this line kind of follows the outer edge of his ear so it curves a little bit it looks kind of like that teardrop and then I'm going to bring it down just a little bit so it kind of curves along with his head or her head next we're gonna add a whole bunch of water to our paint do you see how much water I'm adding that is going to make our paint kind of transparent and so then when we start putting that on, look at how you can kind of see through it. You can also space your lines out a little bit to let some of the white show through. Okay, so now that we have these really cute ears painted pink, we're ready to add a nice cute little pink nose. So to add your pink nose, you can draw it on to your avocado shape of in the dark gray with your chalk first, or you can freehand it. It's up to you. You just need to make sure that that area is nice and dry before you start painting. So I'm gonna grab my light pink. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make what looks kind of like a valley. On top of that valley, I am going to put two little tiny hills, and that is going to be the nose. So once you have the outline, you're going to fill in your nose with your light pink paint. Right, our llama is looking fantastic. We have a nose. And now we get to increase the drama by giving our llama some eyelashes. Eyelashes can be hard to do because you need to push really light 
with your brush. So just like we did before when we were making light lines, we're going to make sure that we're pressing super light with our brush. If you need to, rest your hand on something. It really does help. And then we can give our llama some fantastic eyelashes. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens when you make a mistake. There are ways of fixing it, so don't worry, okay? Don't stress out. So I'm gonna put some eyelashes in the corner of his or her eye, and as they come to the center, they're gonna get smaller, and then I'm gonna put some going down and kind of curving around. Now, here is what happens when you make a mistake. I had too much water in my brush. So do you see how now my eyelashes look really chunky? Or they look kind of splattered. Well, here's how you fix that. You take a clean, damp brush and you start outside the mess, whatever you want to erase, and you scribble back and forth and look how it's picking it up. Sometimes you have to clean off your brush and do that a few different times, okay? Sometimes you have to scrub a few times. And then, once you're happy, you're good to go, you can go back to painting. So make sure you don't have too much water in your paint, like your teacher did. That was my mistake. And I'm gonna come over here and add some more eyelashes. I've noticed one side always looks better than the other. Add some eyelashes down below and kind of make some curvy bags. Llamas have bags under their eyes. So we're using the black paint to kind of make some bags under his eyes. Poor llama. Must be hard being a llama. Okay, so I have eyelashes, beautiful long eyelashes on my llama. And I have those little bags underneath his or her eyes. I'm ready to add a mouth underneath your heart. Do you see that little point at the bottom? We're gonna add two curved lines that go off the sides of your avocado. They curve and go off. Then I'm gonna add another line that kind of outlines the bottom of my avocado. If you wanna add some more details, you can. I add little teeny tiny lines to make it look a little darker on the bottom. And now your llama has a mouth. I'm going to add a little bit of white to his eyes next. So still using the round brush, and I do a little tiny curve. Kind of looks like a comma. Right in the corner of each eye. I'm putting this reflection light on the left hand side of each eye in the corner. Okay, so let me do it to the other side. And there we go. Our llama now looks pretty fantastic. The only thing that I think could make this llama look even better is a flower crown. So, once you have all of your details on your llama's eyes and his nose and his mouth, and if you want, you could do like a little reflection light on his nose to make his nose look quite shiny. So once you have all of those details done, any other details that you wanna add, you can do those now. Once all of those are done, you're gonna swirl tap and dry your brush, and we're gonna make some flowers for his or her crown. You have on your palette three different shades of blue. This is what we're going to use to make our llamas flowers. So I'm gonna use my round brush and I'm gonna choose my favorite shade of blue. And that's gonna be the biggest flower. That's gonna be kind of in the middle. When we're making these flowers, we're not making like perfect little petals. We're just gonna make some uh, kind of easy to make roses. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first I'm gonna start with a center and if you start with a really big center, you're gonna have a bigger flower. And this is gonna be the biggest flower, so I'm starting with a pretty big center. And then I'm gonna start adding little tumors and growing that circle. And do you see how those little teeny tiny knobs 
start to make the flower look bigger and it also makes the flower look really fluffy. Okay, so I have one flower. Now I don't wanna put another turquoise flower right next to this one because it would be hard to tell the difference between the two. So I'm gonna use a different color like my medium blue and put it right next to it. And I'm gonna make a slightly smaller flower. If you notice that your paint is dry like mine is, you just take your brush, mix some water into it, and then it won't make that dry texture that you probably just saw in my painting. Okay. I have two beautiful flowers. Next, I'm going to go to the other side and use a different blue, my last blue. This is called ultramarine blue. It's the darkest blue. And when you're doing this, I want you to think about maybe having some of your flowers kind of overlapping. So this guy is gonna start a little bit closer to my turquoise flower, and he's gonna dis disappear behind so he goes behind, so even though he's still there, we don't see him. And there we go. Now you get to choose. You can put more flowers. You could stop if you want to. I like a few more flowers. I'm gonna put one on each side to cover up the base of his ears. So I'm gonna put a smaller flower on the left side, and then I'm gonna put another different colored flower on the right side. And there we go. This is a crown fitting for a llama. Now, the way we make an easy rose is the detail work. We're gonna use white paint so that it stands out. And we're gonna make a whole bunch of little curvy lines, kind of like we did for the lines for the eyes. So I'm gonna start by adding a little comma in the middle. And then I'm going to add another comma going in the other direction. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I reach the outer edge of my rows. Sometimes these little curved lines can overlap. There we go. So that is an easy to do rose, a simplified rose. And I'm just putting a whole bunch of little curvy lines. They go all the way out to the edge. If you want, if you have time, you could mix lighter versions of each of these colors and use that for the detail instead of the white. Okay. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do if you have the time to do them. And remember, this is your llama. So if you wanted to, you don't have to do the flower crown. You could do a bow tie on your llama instead. Or, you know, why not do both? I'm gonna do both really fast just to show you what the bow tie would look like. So I'm gonna go below his nose and I'm going to have this bow tie kind of go off my canvas. So I'm gonna start with a semicircle. That's, what, that's the shape that looks like a hill. And then I'm going to put diagonal lines coming away from my semicircle and then a straight line, a nice vertical line, just like that. And now I can paint my bow tie in any color I want. I could make po uh, polka dotted bo um, bow tie or maybe hmm, a striped bow tie. This llama doesn't have to be cute and dapper looking. He could be a ninja. <gasps> Ooh, um, this llama could have a bow tie instead of, or let me think, maybe a bandana instead of a flower crown. Okay. There's so many different things you can do. And so you get to do that. This is your painting. Have fun with it. Now that I am just about done with my details,
I am almost ready to call it quits. Just got to add my little polka dots to my bow tie. All right, so once you have all of your awesome details on your llama, you can make sure that any chalk that you left behind is erased by taking a clean, damp brush and just kind of gently wiping it off. And then the very last thing that you need to do is to sign your beautiful painting. Now you can do that with a Sharpie or you can do that with paint. It's up to you. And really, artists sign their work just about anywhere. You could put it on the front of the canvas, on the edge, or even on the back. Okay, if you sign on the back, sign on this wooden frame. Don't sign on this rough canvas, okay? All right, I hope you guys had fun and I hope to see you again very soon. Bye. Thank you for watching this online program. Please help Garden City Arts thank these generous sponsors.